Hello animators, Morris here with another quick After Effects tutorial. If you're looking for a way to highlight text in a way that looks authentic and, and interesting looking, then uh, watch this tutorial. If you enjoy this content, please like or subscribe and thank you for watching. All right, here we are in After Effects and uh, we are going to get to this and create this highlighter. So first we need something to highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new comp here and it's going to be 1000 by 2000 height is probably good enough for me. We're just gonna make this five seconds and we're just gonna put text in here because I got something I can pull in and I'm gonna go up here to my asset. So I've got this PDF and this texture. Okay, let me go ahead and scale this up quite a bit. This text already looks pretty rasterized, and if you go over here and hit this little star button here, that's collapse transformation or con continuous rasterization, and it's immediately cleared up. Second thing you'll notice, this white background is obviously not working here for us, and so we need to go down here and multiply. Okay, multiply is gonna just, it's gonna get rid of all the white, and it's only gonna work in the in the realm of the darks here. So, there's, we got that. And what we'll want to do now is parent the text to the texture. And that's looking a little bit too crisp for us, so we might even want to take down the opacity. So if you hit letter T, because we got this grungy paper, and we got this really crisp text, so it kind of doesn't match. And next, what we will want to do is go and create a new comp, okay? And we're going to do uh, go down here and create our basic HDTV 1920 by 1080 five seconds again. And there's that and then we got our text here and we do we do command or control and forward slash and that just pops it right in there for us okay now what we need to do is create a new solid so we do command or control Y we're gonna write the word highlighter obviously that's 1920 by 1080 make comp size whatever uh, if you hit command and left bracket it'll bring that down below but you want to keep this highlighter layer selected and we're gonna hit the letter G for the pen tool and um, so we can create a mask. And then select off, select back on, and that will allow us to create a new mask. Command right bracket and bring that up to the top. Now we are going to go to effects, and generate, and stroke. And by default, it has one mask selected, but we want to do all masks. And let's go ahead and bring this up to, and let's start with about 36. Okay, that may be a little bit too big. And we want to turn that brush hardness up. But of course, ultimately, we don't know what our brush size should be because we're on this original image here. We want to do it on transparent, okay? And let's pull this back a little bit more. Probably something like that. We don't want white. We want yellow. And let's hit Command Shift H to hide all that on the screen there. And we want to, again, go to our blending mode and go down here to multiply. Um, another thing I like to do is kind of go back on this so you, you don't have to keep it at 100% opacity. So now let's animate. So if we uh, go out about 10 keyframes and I'm going to click on end here and we will go out um, and change that to zero. One, two, three. And I'm going to go out to about, I'm going to just really drag this out because obviously we want we don't want this to be too quick because we have three whole lines here that we need to animate and uh, there's that. Hit the letter U. We need to select both of those keyframes and hit function F9 and we hit our graph editor right here and let's kind of drag this out. And after that is rendered out, that looks about right for us. It's a little bit it gets a little bit fast there at the end. Let me uh, drag this out a little bit more. And if you don't like the color of the text, you can always go over here to color correction. And on this text pre-comp, 
you can kind of uh, darken this just a little bit. But if uh, your highlighters are anything like mine, they get all dried out and they don't, and, and the lines aren't quite as clean and full as you might imagine. And so there's lots of ways to create brush stroke. After Effects does have a, um, a brush stroke effect, um, but there's not as much you can do with that. Uh, sometimes the best thing to do is go out and find your own brush strokes. Today we have gone to Free Pick, and there is tons of stuff here. So this is the one we're going to go with today. And I will leave a link to this down in the description below. And this is some grunge brushes. You can download these and use to your liking as long as you give attribution when you publish these. Let's say if you put them on a YouTube video yourself. And we are now in Illustrator. And uh, here's all of our brush strokes. And oftentimes they're grouped together. So if you hit Command Shift G, that will ungroup them. And uh, let's go ahead and create a new... Um, Illustrator document and and they have these ones that are for film and video um, that's perfect for what we need them for and so there's that let's go back over here and you just kind of pick and choose a couple that you might like go back over here yeah and you paste them okay and now all you need to do is save them and access them and uh, I've already pulled them up over here. And so here we are in my assets. And I have this Adobe Illustrator document called Highlighter Brushes. And so there they are. And you sort of just align them the best you can over this highlighted text. And now we're just going to track map this. Okay, so we're gonna go to Alpha Mat. Obviously highlighters, we're dealing with something that's semi-transparent anyway, and so you're not gonna see this as much as you would like to, but let me uh, scale this up a little bit. And now we see these little blank spaces where the highlighter didn't quite get everything, and that looks gives a little more of a look that we want. All right, now that we've done that, maybe we'll want to animate a camera move just to add some interest. We can go up here and uh, create a new camera. And, uh, and we'll just go with this 35 millimeter preset, enable depth of field, it's up to you. And it says that there's no 3D layers. Well, we gotta make a few 3D layers, don't we? So we make these 3D layers, and then we go over here, right click on the camera, and we create an orbit null. And now we have this null object that the camera is parented to, and it makes all of our camera moves a lot easier to, to deal with, okay? And first thing we want to do is probably just scale up a little bit. And we're going to do a little bit of this Z rotation here. And then we're going to mess a little bit with the X rotation. Just give it a little bit of dimension. And then and make sure you click on all your keyframes there that, of those things you've changed. And I'm not going to do a whole lot. This is going to be a very subtle camera move. I'm going to leave the basic easy ease going on here and we're going to go down here to our depth of field and let's increase our aperture, increase our blur levels and obviously we have a problem here because um, now we're out of focus and so we just kind of style a little bit back on our focus distance. That kind of worked out for us. It just gives us a little bit of blur. Um, you don't see much text going on here. With these changes we made with our blur level, aperture, and uh, focus distance, I didn't need to make any keyframe changes, uh, but we really went crazy on the uh, the blur level here. And certainly by the time we get to the end of this animation, um, everything here that we want to be is crisp, and we have a little bit of blur down here. So, And we've got this little black background here, and there's not much going on, pretty boring uh, to look at. So I've got this footage. It did come from uh, pexels.com. Um, this is good stuff and the good thing about this is that um, it's free to use and no attribution required isn't that awesome so you can use it to your liking but I will leave a um, link in the description down below where you can find pixels and we'll just go over here to blur and sharpen and we'll just kind of crank this up Maybe repeat the edge pixels and 
Maybe we want to darken this just a little bit. It's just to give us a little bit of ambient imagery going on here. And that is how I typically do my highlighted text when I need to do that. So there you go. And you add a few of these elements in here and it sort of just takes it up a notch and that is how you do it.